Hello, my dear friends. How are you? I'm Ari Thurger, and today I'm here to try to briefly answer a question which sometimes pops up. Was Loki a Christian invention? Of course, the answer is no. <laughs> However, this is still an ongoing doubt. In fact, quite recently, I've received this comment which isn't even a question, but an affirmation. Loki did not appear after Christianity, and Loki isn't a Christian invention. Definitely not. I think this doubt is mainly due to the fact that Loki, in the prose Edda by Snorri Sturluson, 13th century in Iceland, actually represents Loki with many, many attributes we find in the figure of Satan and or Lucifer or the devil in biblical tales. In fact, I had already made a video uh, and uh, written an academic paper actually uh, on this subject a few years ago demonstrating the medieval Christian religious consciousness precisely reflected in the figure of Loki in medieval Icelandic literature. And I have half a mind on remaking that one, that particular video, because I can definitely do better. On that video, I have expressed evidences that demonstrate a clear correspondence between Loki and Satan or the Christian devil. I think we can even say that Loki was in part assimilated with Satan in Icelandic Nordic literature of the Middle Ages, although this is a historical fact that we began to see indeed in medieval Norse literature and art, Loki progressively compared to the Christian Lucifer or Satan, this does not mean that Loki was a Christian creation or invention, but actually the figure of Loki, like many other entities and pagan gods, continued to make their presence felt in periods of religious transition and post-Christian periods, molding themselves again to new religious realities. This is what is happening here. Picking up a figure of pagan antiquity and through which presenting moral notions and religious values of the new religion, which helps with the process of religious transition and conversion of pagans by using a figure pagans are familiar with to better express key conceptions of the new religion to facilitate conversion. So, indeed, Loki was, without a doubt, compared to the Christian devil, which Snorre, Snorre Sturluson, further entangled Loki into Christian consciousness by replacing Satan with Loki to convey a doomsday message in his own version of Ragnarok. For instance, reading the events of the Apocalypse and how Satan fights the Archangel Michael and then reading uh, Snorre's uh, Ragnarok and Loki's fight with Heimdallr, it's all there. These comparisons aren't coincidence. And this doesn't also mean that the apocalypse, the apocalypse is borrowed from some pagan version of a Nordic apocalypse. It means that pagan content was used and modified to express Christian religious consciousness and biblical mythos. Some texts circulating on the internet have claimed that Loki may have been a Christian invention or even a late addition by Snorri to Norse mythology. Although this might sound absurd to many who know and study Norse mythology and old Norse belief systems, this misconception is not without some logic. Mind you that there are a few reasons that lead to this thought or, or can lead to this erroneous misconception. One, Loki was not a worshipped god, existing only in Norse myths and late folklore, mostly Danish folklore, so there is really no evidence that Loki was understood to be a god or a divinity, and it's actually Snorre which introduces us to Loki as a deity, so the fact that there, there are no evidences for Loki as a god in heathen times may lead to the idea that Loki was made up during Christian periods. Um, second, or another reason, um, there is no evidence of Loki in typonomy, which supports the argument that Loki was not a god and was not worshipped as such, since, unlike other deities, there are no place names that remote to Loki or a, a space of cult of Loki. This is, this is an historical fact. 
Indeed, Loki was not understood as a god in heathen times, or so it seems, but that doesn't take away Loki's value and importance within the animistic Nordic past. A third reason, there was no day devoted or dedicated to Loki, no temples, no worship. Again, for uh, this entity did not exist before the Viking Age or within the old Germanic pantheon, at least not in name, although the trickster figure is present in many animist and indigenous societies, but there is no evidence of a Loki before the Viking Age. No evidences of an entity called Loki before the Viking period, but there are evidences of the trickster spirit, which later on, be that the same entity or not, a name finally appears to designate a trickster entity in Old Norse myths, and that was Loki. So, these are historical facts that lead to the assumption that Loki was a Christian invention, because we have a lot more details on Loki after Christianity. However, there is evidence of Loki's existence and his pre-Christian origin, which indicates that Loki was not a Christian invention, but simply, like other gods, used in Nordic art and literature in periods of religious transition from heathen to Christian since the 10th century at least. Skaldic poetry of the 9th and 10th centuries of the Common Era cites Loki in abundance, demonstrating a peculiar importance of Loki in the Norse pagan mentality in late Iron Age and early medieval Scandinavia. Also, the amount of diversity of Eddic poems that quote Loki is too great, far too great, to have been a simple Christian invention. Furthermore, the figure of Loki in the myths is very, very complex and goes beyond a simple adver adversary or, or demon from the Christian point of view, as pointed out in medieval Iceland from the um, more or less the 13th century onwards. In fact, instead of a god, we understand that Loki was an important cultural character, transgressor figure, liminal character corresponding to the trickster spirit in animist societies, as well as in cultures and mythologies of an animistic shamanic character. In the pre-Christian Nordic understanding, molded to the Same belief systems and myths. Loki presents itself consistent with several pre-Christian beliefs being closer to a fundamental trickster spirit both in the creation of cosmic events and having an important role in the creation of life and realities where other beings live and exist, including humans, and also presenting itself as a shaman in the sense of a legendary cultural hero. I've talked about this before and I leave such videos uh, suggested at the end of this video as well. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, for those who haven't watched previous videos and may also come here for the very first time and are like, who the fuck is this guy? Well, when trying to perceive shamanism or a um, shamanic line of thought within Old Norse religion, it's actually Pretty interesting to notice that many people go through great lengths, I included, to find traces of shamanism in Old Norse religion. However, such a great effort, but we actually have a figure that a lot more clearly and perhaps even obvious shows us an understanding of shamanism more than any other entity or deity of Old Norse religion. And that figure is Loki. Perhaps it's not a question of Loki being uh, the trickster spirit, but the figure of the trickster spirit is, well, arguably personified in the character of Loki. Loki isn't a god of anything and doesn't have an obvious function like other deities of, the, of this religious environment, which again leads to some doubts indeed in relation to the origins of Loki. Again, no cultic, religious or otherwise evidences associated with Loki, no place names that include Loki. However, in the mythology, he, he is, or Loki is, as present as any other deity, one of the most talked about and present entities in the myths. 
which on other videos I have pointed out has to be second only to Odin, but I'm not so sure now, because Loki does appear almost in every surviving myth and in a lot of skaldic poems and even sagas, and Loki's role isn't defined because he serves many roles, some of them quite contradictory, but Loki is present quite often and often connecting the events and forcing change, quite often the, the key figure through which the story is developed, creating a beginning, a development and a closing element for a time. Loki seems to actually play the role of both the creator and destroyer, this ambiguous character we often see in the trickster spirits of other mythologies and folklore, not a deity, but a trickster spirit which involves itself with the gods, further expanding the stories and creating or destroying realities, the element of adventure, the cultural shaman hero, entangled in the stories and creations of the gods and other creator entities, almost without a clear conscience on what is good and what is evil, acting on an impulsive nature, which is what best defines both the trickster spirit and Loki. Which is actually interesting to notice that both Loki and trickster spirits end up having the same role of not representing any particular morals and values, yet through their impulsive and passionate behaviors, all actions ultimately lead to all values and morals coming into being. We are face to face with an animistic shamanic tradition here. And for now I'm not even going to develop on the gender implications seen in the figure of Loki as a transgressor entity often shifting gender roles and gender identities, just the same way we see in gender notions of shamanism in relation to gender constructions and the shifting of gender. It is unde undeniable the remarkable similarities between trickster spirits and Loki, especially when it comes to this kind of transformative, shape-changing mischievousness, often harmful and destructive, even obscene and sometimes evil, but always essential for the creation and continuation of life. Taking a look at the Old Norse myths, we understand the gods to be divided into families or tribes, which often leads to even more doubts as to where Loki fits into this. But looking at trickster spirits in several mythologies, we understand that Loki, just as trickster spirits, are always placed on a parallel reality. They are not divine, yet they move between realities, connecting and destroying and remaking and forcing evolution, giving way to the continuation of life. There is an important stone, another one has recently been found, which I shall show you further ahead. Well, uh, a stone called the Stone of Stoptun, 10th century of the Common Era, which demonstrates an iconic evidence that Loki is a pre-Christian figure. I'll show you on the screen, let me just get back here. Actually, I'll show you uh, in full screen, why not? <laughs> A hearth stone uh, features a male figure with a sewn-up mouth, following the narrative preserved in Skaldskaparmal of Loki having had his mouth sewn. It is currently exhibited at the museum at Muskort Museum, uh, Orthus, uh, Orthus, sorry, in Denmark. We see here a face carved on a furnace stone or a hearth stone, which was found in Jutland in Denmark, and indeed it may be that of Loki. We see the detail of the sewn mouth which brings to mind Loki's punishment of having his lips sewn together for having lost a wager. So this is an early evidence of possibly Loki. It is important to note that Loki in traditional folklore, especially from Denmark, which was exactly where this hearth stone or stove stone was found, um, is often referred to as a spirit of heat and hot air that helps farmers during the harvest season and during summer as well, but also referred to as a spirit of the hearth. Not itself a spirit of fire, although it is also related to that element, but a domestic spirit of the hearth. The hearth being also the place of, possibly, offerings to this domestic spirit. 
both these folkloric evidences and the literary indications that Loki had his mouth sewn up are reflected in this fireplace stone. In mid-September 2022, a face or a mask figuration was found at the ancient sacred site in Tistel on Zealand, uh, Zealand, Denmark again. It is an absolutely fascinating and gorgeous finding. Some people are really lucky. Arith, are you jealous? Damn right I am! We can see that the figure appears to have torn or sewn up lips again. This may be yet another representation of the trickster Loke, whose lips were famously torn or sewn up, as pointed out previously. I think many of us are waiting for more information on this particular beautiful finding. Obviously, some literary and visual sources after the 10th century present reflections of the Christian view in Scandinavia and Iceland and other Nordic colonies. Loki was compared to the devil, indeed, because it would be better assimilated by new converts, simplifying, quite a lot, Loki's complex figure. In Snorri, Snorri work, Snorri's work, Loki was integrated into Christian eschatology. In fact, there is another wonderful finding, which is a stone found in Cumbria, which depicts a bound figure, perhaps Loki. This is a 10th century Viking Age carving on stone in the English county of Cumbria, which can very much be a representation of Loki as a bound figure, which we know from the myths, the binding of Loki, quite, the, quite a famous myth. However, this is a finding in a Christian context, on display in the churchyard. A carved figure with horns, a beard, a belt and chains. Loki bound with his own son's entrails. You see, this particular finding could give further proof that Loki was a Christian invention, but that's not what in reality we have here. This isn't the only famous monument of the 10th century containing Old Norse myths in Christian context and mixed with Christian motifs. I've spoken here previously about the Gosforth Cross of the same period and in the county of Cumbria too, a Christian cross displaying uh, Old Norse mythological moth motifs mixed with Christian motifs. It is the usage of pagan elements to express Christian morals, values and to make comparisons between pagan motifs and biblical motifs, to facilitate in the process of conversion. I've spoken about it before on another video which I'll, I will leave it here on this right upper corner, uh, if you have the, the time to see it, of course. Um, while the other previous examples are in heathen context, clearly, this one and the one of the Gosforth cross, which also contains Loki, by the way, are in Christian context. I don't want to repeat what I said on that previous video or what I think I said, I don't quite remember it now, but concerning Gosforth cross, but suffice, it, suffice, it, suffice it to say that the intentions of both the bound figure and the Gosford cross motifs are the same. It is the junction of ideologies in a period and context of religious transition, a way to parallel Norse mythology, in these cases Ragnarok, the death of Baldr, and the binding of Loki, with Christian beliefs, the apocalypse, the crucifixion of Christ, and the binding and imprisonment of the devil. A mixture of symbolism, using pagan concepts to illustrate Christian teachings to facilitate the conversion by creating parallels that end up being self-explanatory. And it, it, it is this sort of work of the 10th century that would reshape Loki and turn Loki into a figure with a character closer to the Christian devil, which Snorre Sturluson, a Christian Icelander, would very much further develop in the 13th century and continue this tradition of religious parallels to convey Christian teachings and morals. But the figure of Loki already existed before Christianity. Only it was used just like many other entities and deities to express the consciousness of the new faith. It is always necessary to contextualize and carry out documentary criticism for all primary sources. In conclusion, Loki was an important element of the Nordic cosmos vision 
acting as a liminal figure and being a reflection of some social aspects, some important social aspects. Other gods such as Heimdall, Bragi, Geifion and Idun, or Idun to name a few, also do not appear in the typonymy and uh, had no ritual importance, which does not mean that they were Christian inventions, because behind these entities there are several very complex cultural and religious factors of a remote ancestry, for they were well rooted in Norse mentality, reflecting cosmological and cosmogonic elements that could not have been invented in a short space of time. Although such entities and gods also demonstrate religious and moral elements and understandings of Christianity, indeed they do. But they were not Christian inventions, but rather of pre-Christian origin, eventually used and adopted as elements that also serve to express Christian religious and moral consciousness. It is important to remember that myth and right are different things, as they have different roles in society. The fact that Loke is not known in ancient Germanic sources attests to the dynamism of religiosity in Scandinavia at the end of the Iron Age. We are far, very far from a pure and untouchable Nordic paganism, as the Romantics saw the theme and worked to fal falsify the evidences to further establish their Romantic views. Religion is a cultural phenomenon, therefore always subject to innovations, transformations and additions. All right, my dear friends, I do hope you have enjoyed today's video. I really hope uh, it was useful. My apologies, but this wasn't actually a subject I had in mind, as you might imagine, or as you might have noticed. I have promised you and my patrons a couple of subjects for the upcoming months, and um, I've been working on them, indeed I have. However, and unfortunately, there were abrupt changes in my life, I'm finding it difficult to live life as normal as it is possible due to unfortunate accidents. If you have been around my Instagram, you already know about the many things that happened all at once. So, in due time, and when I can finally settle down, I will certainly get back on track and deliver the content that was promised. In the meantime, because I don't want to abandon you and uh, because I want to keep up with the videos uh, every week and to keep you company, I'll go for um, softer subjects to keep it all running. So, once again, I hope you have uh, enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, don't forget that. Thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Farewell, my dear friends.